Not every tweet is for you to jump on. How on earth were you doing that during a pandemic? Like, how sick do you, I mean, you're, you're a sicko anyway, but you are an extra sicko. Modern day slavery route, we go down the like, child labor route. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley Louise and this is my weekly series, What Was The Outcome? Bringing you all of the shenanigans that have happened over the past seven days. Before I get started, please, 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 please make sure you guys are subscribed. I'm still new around here, so subscriptions do make a huge difference to me. So please, 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 if you do have a spare second, which you do because you're watching this video, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. It just means that you never miss a video from me. Now, let's get into everything that has happened this week i have got so much to just get off my chest i feel like there's so much that has gone on this week a lot of good but a lot of like weird and wonderful things as well this week so let me just jump right into it this week we had our love island screening party sold out twice if you want to kind of see the behind the scenes of that and you kind of want to know what we got up to there is a vlog out i'll put it on the screen here so you guys can go and watch that but yeah it was an amazing event it was so amazing to meet so many of you guys and yeah we'll definitely be doing more love island events in the future Nah, we were kind of expecting that Millie and Liam were going to win anyway, so there's no kind of, I don't really have much to say on that. Again, I'm not going to recap the entire final. There are other channels that do that for, you know, see no shades. But yeah, like, Millie and Liam, like, it's just very giving, like, boring, very custard cream vibes. Like, I'm not sure that any of you guys care about that. What I do care, though, about is Now Magazine. Is it Now Magazine or Now TV? I'm going to check what it is and I'll pop the correct terminology for you on the screen um, of what the magazine is called. But they are trifling and I'm going to tell you guys why. So, firstly, this week, we need to bring new magazine to the front of the congregation because there's a lot going on new magazine and I need an explanation. New magazine essentially um, released a magazine cover with all of the finalists and one non-finalist, Lib Liberty and Jake, um, minus Kaz and Tyler. So essentially what they did is they included all of the Love Island final couples, plus Liberty and Jake, who weren't even a couple. They had left and they had broken up. They didn't even make it to the finals, but they made this cover and excluded Kaz and Tyler. What, I don't understand what, what, I don't understand how you could make such a mistake. Even if you don't watch the show, right? Google is free. Google is free. Google will tell you who the finalists are. Love Island app tells you who the finalists are because people were voting for their favorite couple all of this time. The app told you who the finalists were. So I'm really confused and I really don't get it. I don't understand how you could leave them off the cover. Anyway, they obviously released an apology because Twitter went crazy as did black Twitter. And you know the vibes. I definitely think it was anti-black um it's definitely racism it's definitely colorism like i don't understand how you would leave one of the most popular couples off the front cover of the magazine but even if they weren't popular even if they were hated even if nobody liked them they're in the final they deserve to be in the final and they deserve to be featured on the co cover like everybody else but you've gone out of your way to include liberty and jake who aren't even they weren't even there anymore so yeah it's disgusting new magazine had to say to all our readers we are truly sorry last week we went to press with a love island cover featuring the four con the four couples we thought most likely to be in the f in the top four based on the bookmakers odds and public votes we were wrong and worse than that by leaving out kaz and tyler we let you down Thank you for everyone who has rightly held us to account. We must be we must be a home for fair and diverse representation and we will do better for you all. So 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 the cover isn't of the finalists. It's who they thought would be in the final four. But isn't it the final five anyway? Nobody goes home. Uh, nobody goes home at that point. So it would have been five anyway. So um, they must mean top four in terms of like the public votes. 
which yeah, yikes, yikes. That's disgusting. That is disgusting. And that's rooted in so much else other than that. Um, yeah, new magazine deserve to be dragged. They absolutely deserve to be dragged. In other Love Island news, Mary and Aaron have split, which is music to my ears. I'm so glad they've split because all the energy that Aaron and Mary had for Kaz in the villa, when Kaz rightfully said that they were not compatible, was wasted days after you leave the villa not only do you split up mary gets with some next random guy so really really and truly were you compatible i think not so all of the rah 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 you were doing to kaz when she voted you not compatible was for what that just seems like complete poppy show if you ask me because deep down you knew you weren't compatible deep down you knew you were playing a game deep down you knew you just wanted to get to the final and possibly win and when she called you out on it and she realized that actually these two don't go which you clearly don't you were vex get out of here man honestly who who has got time for it who has got time for it um so yeah i'm, I'm not interested in mary and aaron they're done and you know let's just see what happens with love island for next year Speaking of Love Island, guys, Molly May has now been announced the creative director of Pretty Little Thing. Huge, huge, huge congratulations to her. I really do think she deserved it. It's a long time coming. It really aligns with her brand. She's worked with them a lot before, even before she went into the villa. That girl has got a plan and she is executing it to perfection. I got myself in some hot water again because, so what happened was, I was in a meeting and we were talking about, you know, Molly May being the ultimate influencer. And for me, Molly May is my favorite UK influencer. She is, I don't even, I don't even think I would call her an influencer anymore at this point. She's kind of transcended that typical influencer title, typical influencer uh, like status. And I think she's beyond that. What she's been able to do is be extremely successful, extremely rich, extremely wealthy, have extremely sort of live a extremely luxury lifestyle while being able to come across as extremely relatable. She's so relatable. She still seems so down to earth. And because of that, young girls, and I think a lot of girls, young, old or whatever, feel like that they can aspire to do what she's done or aspire aspire to work to a level that she's at and that's I think the the relatability factor that a lot of other influencers don't really have Molly May is rich let's just be honest she's a multi-millionaire at this point probably um but she still creates content and still puts posts out that make you just feel like she's the girl that lives next door to you and that's why people buy into her brand and I don't feel like lots of other influencers have done that except Mel's wardrobe and so I was in a meeting having this conversation and I was saying, when we do put Molly May in this bracket, someone else we need to put in this bracket is Mel's wardrobe. And I was saying that in a meeting and oh, I don't have, I have no thoughts. So I'm the type of person, I will literally be on my phone speaking to someone about something and I'll be like, oh, that's a good tweet. And I'll tweet it because it's what I'm thinking. So I tweeted it literally 14 minutes after Molly May has made her announcement. I didn't realize she was announcing so early. So it looked like I was trying to overshadow her moment. And I was going back and forth with people and people were like, no, she's just posted. So I deleted the tweet because I didn't want anyone to think that I was comparing the two well I was comparing the two but I didn't want anyone to think I was trying to use Mel's wardrobe in order to overshadow Molly May's moment I absolutely love Molly May I think she is the ultimate influencer I think she has transcended that now I don't know what it is that we call her anymore but what she exudes to me is in terms of like a lifestyle and there's lots of lifestyle influencers but none who do it quite the way she has been able to do it she makes me feel like i can still shop at pretty little thing and still wear like a massive 20k watch on my wrist and some people might be thinking okay what that doesn't make any difference or i don't see what the there is to that but there is something about it and that's why she's been able to be so successful and she plans meticulously so when she was in love island every week a youtube video would still come out she still had posts upon posts upon posts 
ready to go. She had planned what her execution was going to be and that is how she was able to become successful. When she was in the villa, she had her outfit sorted. Every day she came out looking absolutely fire, hair done, outfit coordinated, bang, a picture would go up on Instagram, bang, a YouTube video would come out. Everything was meticulously planned from her point of view and I wish her all the best of luck. And guys, sometimes when you see a tweet, understand context, like, not every tweet is for you to jump on. Not every tweet needs to end up on the gossip pages. Like, not every tweet needs to be pulled apart and attacked. I was never trying to compare Mel's wardrobe and Molly May in a bad way. I think they're both great. And I just think we can, we can, I don't know. I think we can discuss both in the same conversation, but granted it wasn't the time. Another week, another sexual predator exposed. I feel like every week, there is something about a sexual predator. There is something about a like beloved man or like a famous man who gets outed in the press or in the public for being a dirty sexual predator, woman beater, rapist, abuser, you name it. Like every week there is something. Um, and this week is Benjamin Mendy. There are three women that have come forward to say that they have sadly been raped by Benjamin Mendy. Um, and he has been remanded in custody. So they are not giving him any bail. They're, they're keeping him unless there's like an emergency hearing and he's allowed on bail through those means. And there are still people that I see in the comments like, oh, you know, um innocent until proven guilty like what i don't what I, what is wrong with you really what is wrong with you like less than five percent of these cases are untrue or are women lying i don't understand why it's so hard to believe women um i just don't i don't understand it um the 27 year old defender is accused of rape four counts of rape and one count of sexual assault in his home in Cheshire. They all relate to an alleged attack on three women, including one aged under 18, between October 2020 and August 2021. How are you raping people October 2020? That is when there was a whole virus outside that was yamming up the people then. Corona was in full beat October 2020. Were we not still on lockdown? How on earth were you doing that during a pandemic? Like, how sick do you, I mean, you're, you're a sicko anyway, but you are an extra sicko to be doing that to women during a pandemic when you're not, you're supposed to be at home isolating. So he's being remanded in custody until the 10th of September, which is great. Lock him up, throw away the key. Let's see how the trial plays out. We do know that these sorts of cases are usually really hard on the women. Um, they put the women through a lot of emotional um distress and i really really hope the, the women in these case these cases are getting the support that they need i also hope that once the um the criminal proceedings are done these women take his ass to civil court and rinse him for every last penny that he has got because going through something like this as a woman is traumatic enough let alone having to relive it in court but then also having to relive it in the press and the media and the blogs it must be hell so my thoughts and prayers go out to the young ladies who are having to deal with this, especially there's one who's under 18. I think it's preposterous. Um, and I really, really hope that we start believing women more and we start trusting um, women when they say that they have been abused. So yeah, I read that horrible case, horrible thing to have to report on, but lock him up, throw away the key. Um, and let's see what the, the court proceedings show also bearing in mind in these cases rape is notoriously hard to prove so just bear in mind that sometimes in these cases a, a not guilty verdict does not mean that the perpetrator didn't actually do the crime it just means that there was not enough evidence to convict it's a very very hard um it's a hard crime to convict because that the, the um the nature of the crime is usually someone's one word against the other when there's more than one woman coming forward to say that this has happened to them, it probably does make it much, much easier to prosecute. Renee, 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 Renee. How many times did cousin Ashley call your name? I'm not really her cousin, I'm just bannering. Renee, Renee, Renee. Do you know what? Before I get into the situation with Renee, she, 
I always try to give Brené the benefit of the doubt, reason being because I feel like a lot of the time online, people antagonize Brené and then get upset with how she responds. And I don't think that's fair and it's almost like bullying, but it's very passive aggressive. You cannot look for someone's trouble and then cry when they give it to you. And that's what I think a lot of people do with Brené. For the most part, from what I have seen online, she tends to mind her business. She does get into a lot of kerfuffles because she's very reactive. And I think as she gets older, she'll learn to be less reactive. But I think m most of the time I have seen her completely minding her business, people sort of stoking the fire, stoking the fire, poking at her. And then when she blows up and she reacts, everybody's like, oh, here's Renee going again. But actually these people are causing her distress and sort of at, like on her case. So in the past when I've seen people attack her sorry my next door neighbor's dog is going crazy when i see people attack her when i see people um coming for her and saying this that and the third i kind of give her the benefit of the doubt because i think it must just be so difficult to constantly be wound up on the internet and then expect to just be the bigger person every time no I'm not doing it so i get that however there are definitely some instances where she gets into situations that i think could be avoided um, this one being one of them. Now, Renee, um, I think, opened up a salon. I'm not clear on if it's 100% her salon, if she owns it or if it's part owned or if she's the face of it. But for all intents and purposes of this video, Renee opened a salon and I was really pleased for her because in my head, I was like, do you know what? Congratulations, you have taken a situation that can sometimes be associated with some negativity and you have made something out of nothing with it. You have really saved your money got your money together and you've made good out of bad and that's not easy to do it's not easy to do when you've got a lot of people kind of hoping that you fail you've got people blacklisting you you've got people talking about you behind your back and trying to make you difficult so i was really 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 happy for her to see that she'd kind of made a good out of a bad so all for renee when it comes to that and i think i've even dm'd her before when i did the not to be dramatic podcast i definitely did dm her and say do you want to come on the show she didn't reply and that's her right but um yeah i definitely have always kind of been intrigued by her story and we know her backstory of um getting surgery getting botched and you know having some complications and some health complications with that i think it's good for young girls to see that surgery might not always be the way out so again lots of benefit of the doubt for Renee. however this situation does look a little bit iffy it has been said that whilst Renee um had been operating her salon she had been selling wigs to customers and from what i understand mailing them out but she kind of hired somebody in to do the making the wig making the wig process so she would hire somebody in um get them to make the wigs and then send them out to the customers that have already purchased them from my understanding renee already had the hair so she had the the front tools the bundles and this young lady was coming in and making the wigs sending them out to the customers renee's issue here is she allegedly has not paid this girl for her services um, so she's not paid her for creating the wigs and sending them out essentially. Renee is saying that she was in hospital at the time, she wasn't able to send payments and now I believe there's a back and forth on the internet where there's some voice notes and I don't know if Renee, I think until this day Renee has not paid this girl. There has also been allegedly some accusations that Renee had some underage girls working in the shop so 15 years old not paying them to kind of like maintain the salon and things like that which is not good because we kind of start going down the like modern day slavery route we go down the like child labor route and it doesn't look good for Renee and it's not good for her salon it's not good professionally to not be paying your your staff members essentially she's a black business she's a black owned business she's a woman in business Business. she's just a business in general it is the very next day it's the morning the next day and i'm mortified i've just gone to edit the video and i realized that there's no sound in the last few clips so there are some stories that you didn't get you didn't get the only fan story you didn't get the umar kamani story and you also didn't get the tom cruise story so i'm gonna have to follow up with you guys next time um but yeah i'm guided but there's nothing i can do about it so i just wanted to say goodbye properly <laughs> because the video is crap um but yeah I'm, I'm new to this i'm still learning so please 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 forgive me but anyway guys please like comment subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye